Good morning, Code Bakers. We are currently using a map that is made from a single image. The chocolate cake and the rest of the baked goods are tiles, but most of this map, including the friends, are made from a single image. Today, we start the process of putting custom maps into your game so that you can be more creative in your storyline. We are using the Serene Village tile set from Lime Zoo, which is available on itch.io. We're going to need to get the tile sprite sheet into the assets slash images directory of our current project. In the unzipped Serene Village revamped folder, we're going to grab the Serene Village 16 by 16 tiles. The tile set will look like individual graphic building blocks that you can use, you know, kind of like Lego or stamps. And we're going to use this in the as a tile set to paint our map. Initially, you'll build a simple map. If you are new to tile D, you can create a new map with these parameters. Make sure the tile layer is base 64 uncompressed. This is not the default setting. If you're using the same tile set as me, probably set it best to set the tile size for 16 by 16 pixels. The map size is not important, but I'll eventually set it to 88 by 50 tiles. We're starting off with a completely blank map with no tile sets. From the assets images folder, you should have copied the tile set in there and you can now drag and drop it onto this tile set window. Initially it's hidden for me, but I'm pressing that purple T in my windows taskbar. And then this, um, I, I don't know why the dialog is hidden, but it, it, it's consistently hidden. Make sure the embed in map box is checked. If you're using the same tile set as me, when you made the new tile set, it should be 16 by 16. If you have any problems, you can delete the tile set with, by pressing the trash can. If you do not have this tile set pane, go into views, views and toolbars and make sure the tile set is checked. Select a grass tile from the tile set and then use the bucket fill tool in the top menu bar to paint it in. Save the file as map underscore text dot tmx. This is in the your project folder asset slash tiles. We're going to do a quick test just to make sure that the map does work before we spend too much time, you know, dropping uh, houses and things on it. So let's just make sure we have the tile set in here. And even with a single tile, uh, let's run a test. Before we run the test, we're going to have to comment out the baked goods because we don't have a baked goods layer right now. And we also do not have a friends layer. So the application won't work. We'll, we'll uncomment this in the future, but whoa, there's an error. Well, so just comment it out. We're gonna use it, so don't delete it. This is just to test the new map. So you, the old map, it has all the friends, it has all the baked goods. Um, and so when you load it, it's gonna load. But if we change it to the new file name, Oh, I think I called it happy underscore map for happy Bay Village. Okay, maybe change the name to happy. Whoa, it's not loading. When this occurs, the first suspected uh, place would be the pubspec.yaml file. And sure enough, I had previously imported or just set the only that single file. So now that we have two different map files, I'm going to just put asset slash tiles, this should load all the tile maps within that folder, hopefully. Boom, and here we go. Okay, I think it's great to test the map at this point. It looks fantastic. We are able to now customize the map with individual tiles and make it look exactly how we want it to. If you're just learning to use tiled, I highly suggest that you uh, create a short map first, test it, and then create another map. Uh, we're going to actually now set the size of, you may, you may have already done this with yours, but uh, 
I had a smaller map initially, so I'm gonna now, I deleted the map, I'm gonna create a new map of 88 by 50. You don't need to do this step if you started off with that uh, same size map. I'm a big believer in repetition of small steps. So um, we're, we're starting with a new map. We're gonna have to make the tile set again. I think it's good practice. You notice that I call it the layer ground. We're gonna have multiple layers in this map. This will be the finished map. Okay, let's do the process again. So you just drag and drop, assuming it's the right file name format for Dart and Flutter into the tile set area. And then pick the base tile color that you want. You don't have to follow this tutorial exactly. You can make it look exactly how you want it to look, but don't put too many uh, objects on it initially, just in case it breaks. I don't want you to spend half an hour making the, the map at this stage and then you encounter a problem. So there's a stamp tool for the house. Put the houses on a separate layer called buildings. If you put it in the same layer, uh, you know, you'll, you won't have that green portion for some of the buildings. And also make sure you're, you are using the stamp tool and not the fill tool. To practice using layers, we'll create another layer. Uh, this one will be the path layer. So, you know, we'll try to create some walking space. It won't have collision detection on the path at this point, but it'll give you some practice working with the individual layers. Build some type of path that you want to use in your game. I'm kind of struggling a bit here, but uh, I'm sure you're a better artist than I am. So just make something that looks like a path, basically. Once you have something that looks vaguely like a path, save the file into the assets slash tiles directory of your Flutter project. I'm going to overwrite the happy underscore map dot tmx file. The map is now a, a bit happier because there should be some buildings and there they are. At this point, you can create whatever type of map that you want and put whatever type of text message you want in the dialogue at the time of interaction with um, one of the objects. Currently, George has the initial dialogue that comes in. Uh, we took out, if you recall, the friends and the baked goods objects, but we're gonna add it back in right now. To do that, you'll need to create a layer of objects. So this is different. Create the object layer. It should be that pink square. We'll call the object layer friends with a capital F. This is the same name we used in the previous video for the friends layer where the friend was glued onto the screen. If you recall, the object layer does not have a graphic associated with it normally. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another tile layer so that uh, we can see the characters right now. And when we put the characters on the tile layer, we won't be able to delete them in game. If you wanted to do that, you have to put a loop in and then add the sprite onto the object. But we're just gonna draw it on here. And maybe in the future we'll have the friend disappear, but we'll have the baked goods disappear. So you can see how it works when you uh, have a loop and you, you want to hit an object and take an action on that object. But for the friends, um, we'll just detect the collision, but we won't erase the friend. We previously downloaded this Modern Tiles free pack from LimeZoo. This is on itch.io and it's the Lime Zoo site. We're gonna use the Amelia 16 by 16 tile sprite sheet as the friend. So we'll just grab Amelia when she's maybe looking in the front and we'll just use the same friend for both of these examples. Of course, you can have multiple tile sheets or multiple characters. Uh, you know, just drop it into the tile sheet and use that character. But we'll use Amelia for both friends for simplicity right now. And Amelia looks very small, but I guess she's proportional to the house. So maybe Amelia is the right size and just George is big. 
I increased it to 200% and I've selected the object layer. With the object layer, the friends layer, the pink one selected, you can access the draw rectangle box and we're drawing a rectangle around both of the friends. This rectangle is the bounding box that we're going to use for the collision detection with the friend and take an action. So let's save it and go back to the code. So remember, we're saving in assets slash tiles. Okay, I think I made an error. I, I didn't put the Amelia underscore idle file in the assets slash images. So let's uh, check out this map.tmx. It probably has the wrong location of the sprite sheet. I'm just going to edit it manually. On line 10, I know that it should be dot dot slash images because it's one level up from the tiles. Uh, directory and then one level down in images and then it's the name of the file. The dot dot means level up. Okay, after reloading, we see George is now looking like Godzilla. He's huge. But I guess the friend is actually proportional to the size of the house, right? So I think I need to cut George down. But let's test the collision a bit with the Godzilla-like George. If you recall, the hitbox is in a separate portion of that map.tmx file. So the, the sprite appears on the screen, but unless we uncomment that hitbox portion, there's going to be no collision on it. So after uncommenting it, now you see the debug mode is on. So we have this purple box around the friends. And now we can test the interaction if we ever manage to get there. Okay. So it's the expected behavior. Uh, there's no baked goods. And if you recall, without the baked goods, George will be unable to make friends. I get it's not buying friendship. It's just maybe you know, doing something nice for somebody else. And so they're going to do something nice for you in return. And that something nice is they're going to invite you over for dinner. To make it all happen, to make the friendships blossom, we are going to add the baked goods in now. And with the baked goods, this is the key to George's making new friends in Happy Bay Village on the Happy Map. Create a new layer, it has to be the object layer, called Baked Goods. It's the same process as the Friends object layer, except this one is called Baked Goods with a capital B and a capital G. You need to use this exact spelling right now because we have the Baked Goods identifier. It's in the code. So unless you change the code, it won't be a match. To make the tutorial shorter, I'm not going to insert images into these boxes. So I have the box selection tool initially, and I'm using Control D to duplicate the box. Once the box is duplicated, then I can move the box on the upper layer. But I think I actually pressed D too many times, so I may have too many objects at this point. Let's take a first pass at it and just see what it looks like in our game. I'm going to name the type of each of the objects as something like apple pie, choco cake with a capital C, two capital C's, cheesecake, and cookie. Okay, uh, we need to uncomment the add baked goods, I believe. Is, are there baked goods now? There's no baked goods right now. It's kind of a little sad, but I believe the solution is simply to uncomment the add baked goods. So there it is. Okay, so let's uncomment this. And then 
go back and refresh it and let's see if we have the baked goods. We are already have two baked goods. It looks like we have more than enough baked goods. There's some problem in the object placement. So let's go back and look at so why we have too many apple pies. You may not need this step in your map depending on how precise you were at the duplication and the object uh, placement. However, in my case, there's some error in the map here. So I have the object tab selected in the right hand pane. And a lot of these are duplicates because what I did is I pressed D too many times. And I have uh, this square box and there's nothing in the box, you can't see it. I have it layered on top of each other. And so using this inspector on the right hand side, the selected objects, I can see what cakes I have and what, you know, what, what pastries. So um, now I can look at the individual type and just make sure I have all like one of each of the baked goods, choco cheesecake, apple pie. Then I've got the cookie. And I think I need the, I don't, I don't have the cheesecake yet. I want the cheesecake. All right, so let's change this one to cheesecake. And once again, I'm getting hungry, but I'm just gonna power forward. Okay, it's looking good. Uh, maybe we'll place it all on the, kind of in this right hand area. Makes it a little bit easier for test. George does have to walk some distance to get to the baked goods. Remember, the game is quite unforgiving. If you try to make a friend uh, and you fail because you don't have baked goods, you've lost your chance forever right now. You can, of course, start adjusting the plot and the, the, the game dynamics. Okay, apple pie. I think that was apple pie. Come on, George. Okay. He successfully made a friend. You can tell that the friend count is one now. His objective is to get two friends and he's gonna miss his chance here. Okay, well, it was a good test. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.